Johnny Mirror here, and welcome to another video. Today, we're going to be talking about Warhammer 40,000 Space Marine 2. Now, I didn't think I would ever talk about this game. Uh, like, if you would have asked me a month ago, I would have been like, oh yeah, I know about it, but I don't really care. Well, boy was I wrong, because, well... Due to, like, just recent events and me just kind of seeing things on the game and learning a bunch of information that, that we're going to talk about in this video, I've realized, why am I not excited for this game? It looks awesome. It looks awesome. It seems epic. And, yeah, I just absolutely want to talk about it because I am genuinely excited for this game now. I think it's going to be really, really fun. And I just want to talk about it because there was, uh, I think, like a bunch of hands-on previews or whatnot that happened recently. And there's a lot of feedback and a lot of just opinions and takes going on around about, about the game. From what I've seen, overwhelmingly positive. Uh, and, yeah, I just kind of want to talk about that. But if you guys love video games, don't matter what you like. PlayStation, Xbox, Nintendo, third-party, indie, whatever. Consider... Sharing with your friends, subscribing, I appreciate it. If you love video games, this is a place to be. We cover everything. I appreciate any support you give me, especially the support on the video right here. But without further ado, let's get talking about Warhammer 40k Space Marine 2. Now, like I said, I've never I've never been into Warhammer 40k. I've never played a Warhammer 40k game. I've never like gotten information on what this series actually is I, I i genuinely know almost nothing about it but it has such an interesting just look and overall feel to it it just feels like your war game but like with a lot of fantasy but also like post-apocalyptic feeling to it um so i i kind of really like that but with space marine 2 i remember seeing the original trailer and being like yo I like the, the, the big giant suits. I, li I like all the monsters. It was a really dope cinematic Mac trailer, but I never really, I never really thought anything of it. I, I, I kind of like put it to, to the side and that was a huge mi mistake. Then we saw gameplay and I remember thinking, yo, that, look how many enemies are on screen. Uh, it, it looks really fun. But again, I kind of just put it to the side for some reason. And it wasn't until recently until I started like, uh, uh playing a lot of same things again. And then where I, I saw it again. And I was like, I want to play this. Why have I not wanted to play this? Because when I look at the trailers and when I just see all the gameplay, it just screams epic fun. And that is something I love. It, it seems to have a lot of things that I'm personally into. I love like super futuristic like tech, kind of like their, their giant mechs. I love post-apocalyptic stuff like, like zombies and aliens and stuff like that. I love games where there's huge amounts of enemies. I love war games. I think that that's really cool. The whole idea of like sending armies at each other, I think is really, really cool. There's a lot of things about this game that pique my interest. And for some reason, I just put it to the side. Well, no longer are we doing that because boy, am I excited for this game and hands-on previews are overwhelmingly positive about this game. So I think this is definitely a game that people, if you're not already interested in, maybe look into it because this game does genuinely seem really really cool um so let's get on with uh some of the things that uh the previews have said and the first one is that they were uh, quote unquote taken taken back by the sheer scale atmosphere and attention to detail so I feel like this is easily going to be one of the best parts about, about the game. When you watch the trailer and when you see them just walking in these environments, see these gigantic buildings, see these gigantic uh, amounts of enemies, when you see these amazing skies and, and just different environments, it just looks so grand and so rich <laughs> i think they even used the word rich in the trailer because i rewatched all the trailers before doing this video and they, they even used the word rich i think that's so true it just feels so alive and so atmospheric and it really does have that that epic scale to it and i think that's what really is helping drive the oh my gosh this looks super duper awesome because it just looks so grand in scale uh, and yeah, I, I do think that is one of my most like excited things about the game. It's just its atmosphere, its attention to detail. Those mechs and those those or not not mechs, those suits of armor look so pristine, but also so worn down, and they look so good. 
you just can't help but appreciate the detail that they put in. This is also a game where when when you look at it, when you watch each other, you could just tell the amount of time and effort they put into this game. Something similar is like Black Myth Wu Wukong. That game's also coming out really soon. And when, when you just watch the trailer, you just, you can see time, effort, blood, sweat, and tears portal into every detail you're seeing on the screen. And that's, that's something absolutely I love about this game. Um, they said a lot of effort has gone into world building. Uh, could be very well the most authentic Warhammer 40k game we've seen to date. So I wouldn't really know about if it's the most authentic Warhammer 40k game to date because I've I've never gambled, I've never dabbled into Warhammer 40k. I don't really know anything about it. Uh, but what I will say is I do think that this does seem like a game where world world building is going to be a big thing because it is a story game, but then it's also co-op and multiplayer game. There are three sections to this game. There is the story mode campaign. There is co-op like PVE mode, so like operations and stuff. And then there's a like a competitive uh, PV PVP mode. Um, so the way I would consider the way the, the the way I'd compare this is Call of Duty. You have your your campaign, you have your zombies, and then you have your 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 multiplayer. Uh, and that's kind of how I would uh, compare it to this game. But I, I do think with a game like that, world building is going to be a huge thing within the environment, within the, the, the things you're doing, the enemies you, you're, you're, you're facing. And then, of course, the, the story mode to kind of set, set the ground, um, set the base level for all of that. Um, and so, yeah, I, I, I'm not really surprised by this, but that's really good to hear that uh, it seems like they executed that well. Uh, the blend of shooting and melee feels very fluid and satisfying. Er, satisfyingly brutal uh yeah i mean we've gotten this from from the trailers it just the gameplay looks super duper fun just it's gonna be so satisfying to just swing that giant sword across multiple enemies just lay waste to a bunch of monsters with with giant uh, lmgs and stuff like that it's gonna be really awesome uh parries dodges counters gun strikes um that I did not know. Actually, I'm just now. I'm, I'm kind of reading this as we go. I'm kind of just talking off the dome, giving my thoughts and feelings on this game. Parries, dodges, counters, and gun strikes. That's a lot of different things there. I did not think you, we would have like dodges, count counters for sure is interesting. I figured we'd have parries sort of because there, there's like a shield guy in there. Uh, gun strikes. I don't really know what that. Is. I'm guessing like maybe you have like a like a blade attached to your gun or something. Um, parries can instantly kill smaller enemies or interrupt larger enemies combos interesting okay so wow so yeah okay so this combat is definitely not just like just absolute spray and pray there there's actually like skill involved which that's really cool um some some liked parries and finishers. Others felt they broke up the flow of combat and slowed it down too much. So interesting. So this is apparently a negative about the game based on previews is that some really liked the parries and finishers, but others felt like it broke the flow of combat. I can see where that happened. A lot of times parries do this like really crazy animation that kind of takes you out of the gameplay because you can't do anything while it's doing the animation and especially if it's an action heavy game i could definitely see where that that happens finishers i don't feel that finishers you're you're still watching the action happen you just you're you're seeing a really really cool animation uh but yeah uh pairing i can see where that kind of slows down combat if if it's done in a certain way um there is a multitude of execution style attacks like tearing limbs off uh ripping apart power armor and um a bunch more cool <laughs> that sounds that sounds absolutely uh absolutely awesome uh you gain health through consumables stim is found in the game executions are vital as they fill a portion of your armor okay so that's a cool little system a lot of games do that uh, and there's more strategy take out groups of smaller enemies first that are surrounding you or focus on the larger tougher enemies to se uh, to sever their synaptic link to the smaller ones Ranged enemies can slow you down or poison you while other enemy types buff others. Interesting. Okay, so they're basically it's kind of like which which enemy do we take out first? Do we need to prioritize the pe people slowing us down who are poisoning us or do we need to prioritize the thing that is boosting the other smaller ones? Um so it, uh, that's really cool. I I do like that. That adds a whole another layer, a bunch of depth, uh great uh game gameplay loops for that. So definitely a good thing here for that 
uh, there's a jump pack. Fire fire from high up, dive down on enemies with a devastating strike. Yeah, we've seen that trailer. They're like flying above the sky, uh, looking at uh, a ton of different enemies. And then they come crashing down, slamming into the ground, doing stuff like that. Looks really, really fun. Uh, graphics are a quote-unquote feast for the eyes. Tons of details in character, armor, weapons, environments, animations, bolt round explosions, skies filled with tons of enemies, chaotic soundscape is spot on. Okay, so this just seems like a visual masterpiece is what it, is what it's sounding like. It sounds like everything you want out of a epic looking game, the visuals and graphics hit the mark spot on. And that's absolutely awesome. I mean, just when, when you're looking at the footage here just looks insane it just looks insane absolutely epic operations mode pve co-op missions take place alongside the main story play as your own customizable space marine in a squad of three so this is interesting it, it takes place alongside the main story so i'm curious how that works if like i'm assuming there is probably like a hub area after every mission you go on where you can like customize and upgrade your stuff talk, talk to some npcs and stuff i wonder if there's like the operations um computer system like in that hub or something um because i could definitely see where that that could tie into the main story but i'm curious like if it has to do with story stuff or if it's just like it takes place during certain segments but it doesn't actually tell anything in terms of story very curious what that means uh and then squad of three that's an interesting choice i i, I remember seeing that trailer thing like is there only three? Because that's a very interesting number to have. Don't know if that's on um, purpose or, or not. I don't know if that's just a Warhammer 40k thing or not. Let me know in the comments. I'd love to know. But very, very interesting. And then, uh, apparently, one PvE mission sees your squad spring a trap on a Tyranid Hive Tyrant, which disables a Tyranid Swarm that Titus was fighting in a separate campaign mission. Makes you feel like a bigger part of... Uh, bigger picture in the story so okay sorry i just read the the most uh, insane paragraph i've ever uh, read because there's so many words i have no idea how to say no idea what i'm talking about but okay so apparently the pve missions can help further develop the main story but they're not key parts so pretty much like it said uh, it disables something, a swarm that Titus was fighting in a separate campaign mission. So it makes you feel like a bigger part of the story while not actually being in the main story. That makes sense. Uh, and then PvE missions will take about 30 minutes on normal difficulty. Variety comes from the AI director that changes up enemies depending your class and playstyle. Springing, surprise, ambushes, etc. Cool. Adds variety, great gameplay loop. Love to hear it. And then, in, and then for classes, there's tactical marine, assault, vanguard, bulwark, uh, bulwark. I don't know. Sniper, heavy, and each come with different weapons, perks, abilities that have unique uses on the battlefield. So, from what I'm getting from a lot of this preview is num number one, the game is fun, and the game is huge. The game has a lot to offer in terms of content, um, and the game has a lot of in-depth systems and mechanics to help deliver variety through a very interesting gameplay format. Uh, and I think this seems awesome because, like we've talked about multiple times, the game seems epic. I sound like a broken record, but it seems epic. There's so many cool things in this game. The Just the movement the the combat the characters the world all of it just seems really really awesome and i can't wait to dive in and play it for myself let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below i'd love to hear what you have to think especially since i've never played a 40k game so i'm going into this completely buying really no expectations outside of i think it looks really fun and epic but thank you all so much for watching i'll see you in the next one johnny morales peace